Right, so this is a guideline to answer the fourth hour of our tutorial, which is uh, in week two, the first hour in your timetable in week two. All right, so for the first question, actually, we are going to apply uh, the initial rate method. All right, initial rate method so for the first question just apply the initial rate method so once you already know the order operation for these two reaction you can write down the rate law and also from the rate law substitute any value from any experiment right to find the value of rate constant so remember the units for rate constant is always depending on the total order of reaction and then for our face to face question, all right, so we have a data, right, listed in the table below. So we have the time and also the concentration. Okay, this one is the radioactive decay. So take note, the radioactive decay is always in first order reaction. So the first question by graphical method prove that this decomposition is a first order reaction. So you need to prove it. As you know, the graphical method, we have two different graphical methods. The first one is the linear graph method and the second one is the half-life graph method. Okay, so for the half-life graph, uh, you just plot the concentration versus time, right? Graph of concentration versus time and then compare the first half-life with the second half-life. Okay, if you still can remember, in our guideline, page 3, Okay, so we have a linear graph, okay, for each order of reaction and also the half-life graph. For the half-life graph, if you compare the first half-life and the second half-life, okay, so let's say you plot the concentration of A versus time and then you get the straight line graph, automatically it will, be, it will become a zero order reaction, okay, because the T half first is equals to two times of the second T half, okay, but if you got this kind of graph, okay, your graph is like this, it's, it can be either first order or second order. So, by comparing the T-half, you will know the order of reaction. If the T-half is the same for the first and second T-half, means that it is a first order reaction, but if it's not, it is a second order reaction, okay. So, for the linear graph method, okay, so the graph for zero order should be concentration versus time. So, if you plot the graph concentration versus time, you get a straight line graph. Automatically, it will become a linear, uh, it will become your uh, zero, it will become zero order reaction. But, if not, you have to plot Long concentration versus time graph. Okay, if you get a straight line, means that it is a first order reaction. But if it's still not, plot one over concentration versus time graph. If you get the straight line graph, means that it is a second order reaction. So it, the linear graph method uh, for each order of reaction are different. So you for, uh, for the question that asks you to determine the order of reaction by using a linear graph, these are the graph that you should plot. So one of these will become your answer. Just submit your answer. Uh, just submit the correct graph for your final answer. You don't need to submit all the three graphs. So back to our tutorial question. Okay, since the question just mentioned a graphical method, so you can either use the linear graph method or the half-life graph. This uh, two is correct, okay? So, uh, if you plot the linear graph, so since this is a first order, the graph that you should plot is graph of long concentration of magnesium versus time, okay? Where your graph should look like this, right? So, long concentration of magnesium versus time. So, here the y-intercept is our long concentration magnesium initial. Alright. So, to determine the rate constant, if you plot this graph, okay, you, you can directly determine the rate constant by have a look at the gradient. So, so we know that long concentration magnesium is equal to negative kT plus Lon concentration magnesium initial. So we have lon magnesium as our y axis and then 
mx plus c. Alright, so our x-axis is time. Okay, y uh, intercept is non uh, magnesium initial. Okay, so the gradient here. Alright, so the gradient here is equals to negative k. So to find to find the cons the rate constant, right? Find the negative gradient. Alright, so that's for the second one. And then if you use this graph, if you use this graph, okay, uh, to determine to determine the half life, okay, given the initial concentration one molar, to determine the half life. Right, so use the formula for the half life for first order. So T half is equals to ln 2 over K. So from the K that you get in B, just substitute in this formula, you will get the T half. Alright, so we are not going to use the A naught here because this is a first order reaction. There is no concentration in T half. But if you want to use the second graph method, the half-life graph, concentration of magnesium versus time, okay, you will get a graph like this, and then in your graph, right, so this one is the concentration magnesium initial, okay, half of it is our uh, first T half, okay, T half first, and then again, half uh, divided by 2 again, so we get the second T half. Right, and then compare the first and second T half. Right, so this is a first order reaction because the T half first is equals to T half second. So that is your answer. Right, so from this graph, okay, determine the rate constant. So since we have the T half, so for B, if you use this graph for B, right, so the T half is equals to ln 2 over K. So since you already have the T half, you can find the value of K. All right, and then determine the half life. If concentration A0 is equals to 1 molar, so actually concentration A0 is equals to 1 molar, so half of it is our first T half. So directly you will find the first T half value. Alright, so here initial con all right, so initial concentration of magnesium. So Typing error, this one is should be magnesium. Okay, magnesium not is equals to 1 over 0, 0 molar. So half of it is our first T half. Now for question number 3. So again, we have experimental data, time and concentration. Plot a graph of concentration against time. Okay, from the graph, determine the half life for the reaction. Calculate rate constant of the reaction. So this question, okay, is specifically asked you to use the graph of concentration N205, alright, so against time, alright, so from the graph, determine the uh, half-life, okay, but before you determine the half-life, determine first the order of reaction, okay, determine first the order of reaction. Always remember when the concentration of N2O5 not is given as 0 0.2 molar. Okay, this is our first con uh, our initial concentration. So to find the first half life, the first half life is always uh, from the graph is always concentration of N2O5 not over 2. So you have to divide it by you, you have to divide this value by 2. And then, alright, so let's say here is 0 0.2 molar, okay, divided by 2, alright, so we have 0 0.1 molar, so from here until the line, and then you will get the first T half, okay. To find the second T half, this value divided by 2, okay, and then again, right, until you reach the point, and then you get the second T half.